everybody, this is Leslie with Color Art, and today I'm going to be doing an, uh, my normal piece overhead on my other camera. I'm going to start off on this table here so I can kind of show you what I've mixed up and a little bit about the GoFundMe that I started. Uh, many of the paint pouring communities are aware that when we first got discovered, we were not prepared for uh, 420 options by 1,500 people, and it kind of killed us for a almost two months trying to hand fill those orders. Well, if we put together these packages, um, they are specific packages that we're going to do by assembly line. So you can purchase at 216 colors of the Big Mamas, 108 of the Big Mamas, 72 of the Big Mamas, 48 of the Big Mamas, or 18 of the shaker jars. A lot of you like those little shaker jars to get started with. We're doing it through a GoFundMe um, you can take a look at the GoFundMe list of colors actually on our website on colorart.com and if you're interested go to the GoFundMe help color art grow and you'll be able to uh, for example on the platinum package save 34 percent freight is free and this is considered a donation on your taxes and there's no sales tax so what we're attempting to do is sell enough of these packages to not only take care of our pouring community at a great price, but hire a filling contractor. So someday you'll be able to find our product on Dick Blick, or we'll have prepackaged product made by a company in the USA. So we'll be able to fill in demand and not worry about having to hand fill our product. So for those who are interested, there's the information and the different discounts on the different packages. So today, I'm going to be doing a 24 by 30. Sorry, I'm doing this first intro on my phone. I have pre-mixed, these are 16 ounce containers, okay? And they're about three quarters of the way full, a little bit less. They're anywhere from 10 to 12 ounces. Um, I've used approximately three, two to three tablespoons of color. And incidentally, a 30 mil jar will probably give you five, I'd say about two and a half teaspoons of color on this. This color is the ginger flower. It's, uh, I'd say I used approximately four ounces of the Vivid multi-surface enamel. This is just a little bottle, one of the older bottles I have. The newer bottles will actually say multi-surface uh, enamel for mixing your own paints. Um, I used Liquitex and GAC 800. Um, half and half, it's in this little bottle. I'd say about two tablespoons to each one of these batches. I'm going to add um, approximately 12 drops of my treadmill oil that I got on Amazon, the micro lube, and I will be transferring them to big squeeze bottles. And these are, I think, 16 ounce squeeze bottles. They come with a really nice fine tip. This intro is just for this camera only. Um, we'll be switching to the bigger camera to actually do the overhead. I've not tried to do this, so let's hope this goes well. We're gonna do a big overhead piece on my other camera. As a teaser though, what I've got coming for you in the next video is how the resin looks. I wonder if I can get a macro shot of this how the resin looks on top of our colors. I figured it out. This is a piece that I did use silicone with. Sorry for the glare, I'll see if I can't somehow pull that glare out of there from that camera and see if you can get a close up. It's really hard to see the shimmer on the camera. Uh, and uh, many of you have probably seen me do my Ordos piece, a couple of my other pieces. I resined and I had the same issue as many of you when you're using silicone and it separates. This came out like glass. And I have a tip, I figured it out. This is a single layer of resin over my silicone pour. Look for me in the next video because I'm going to give you tips on exactly how I did this. See you in the overhead in just a few minutes. Bye. Hey everybody, so I'm back and we're going to try to do this overhead shot. I have a 24 by 48 you can't see under my bottle. I've transferred that paint into the squeeze bottles. This is the Artist Loft Green Opaque. It's a, it's a matte color. It's their neon green. Silver Gold, Ginger Flower, Stargazer, Ginger Bleach, and some Artist Loft Black. The Artist Loft Black has no silicone in it. Each one of these colors has, um, I just put in some treadmill oil 
and a couple shots of my WD-44, some extra insurance. And then before I put them in the bottom of the bottle, I did one shot on the bottom of each bottle, poured the paint in halfway, put one other shot in the middle of it, and poured the paint the rest of the way. I wanted some insurance policy that there was plenty of silicone in these bottles because, I mean, this one's almost halfway full, so this has to be 12 ounces of Stargazer. Um, I'm going to have to scan back so we can get to this entire canvas. Sort of a simulation of what I did on my day five video because everybody said those flowers in the ginger, those colors in the ginger flower look like a row of flowers. So I've kind of mapped out with watercolor pencil. I'd like to do a row of them, long green stem, another row in the ginger flower, continue the stems down on both of them, and then another row down here. Um, I'm thinking where I drew this is a little bit too high, so I'm going to try to wing it and put this a little bit lower, but this is just kind of a guide of where I wanted to go. My first instinct was to actually mask off half of this and do one controlled swipe on the top half and one controlled swipe on the bottom half, but I want the stems coming down from these, if anything else, just have some long, green, drippy stems off of these colors. It's, remember, this is an abstract. It doesn't have to look like a perfect painting of flowers. Let's see if I can get this camera moved in closer where you can see me working at the top. I will have to shift this camera a little bit left and right as I do these close-ups. So bear with me, I'm alone. I don't have a cameraman to do this part for me. So again, first time trying to do a big piece with my camera at a slant. Most of the times you see my smaller pieces where I have my tripod directly over. But so I'm thinking I'm gonna put down the flowers first or the pattern that's going to look like a flower. I will use some popsicle sticks to kind of guide my area. I've got a couple palette knives in case I get into trouble. Got my popsicle stick and my palette knives here because I don't necessarily want to blow this out. So going down here with the ginger flower, I feel like that first one was a little bit high. So I'm going to try to bring this down a little bit. see how well I can follow my own instructions. I like the squeeze bottle because it's going to give me control of the pattern and shape that I want to put down. If I get real quiet guys, I'm sorry, I'll try not to be, but I have a tendency if I'm going to focus on the painting to get quiet on the camera. That's why so many of us do voiceovers because there comes a time when we're super, super quiet and then you guys are going, well, what are they thinking? They're not saying anything. What is she doing? So I'm going to kind of fill in this pink area. You know, I was tempted to use another color here and kind of try to do gradation, but I'm not. I'm just going to do the solid ginger peach take my palette knife and spread it out. I right, just have a nice thin coat of that color. This video is going to probably be a little bit longer than normal because I'm going to do the entire piece on camera. And let's hope if you see it, that means I'm happy with the piece. <laughs> Obviously, if you don't see this, you would never know that I I did it and I wasn't happy with it, but let's hope against hope that I'm happy with this. Oh, the rest of this color in there. You know, even though I made up all this color, this extra color could come in handy for a much smaller piece. I'm going to have to work fast. It looks like I'm working slow, but I'm going to have to work fast just to get 
get that color in here. So we don't want it drying up on us before we swipe. So I'm going to try to put paint across this entire canvas before we swipe. I'm going to probably put a little black in there, so if you're wondering why I left that gap. And I realize this is an abstract, but hopefully it takes a little shape. Shout out to Candy, who's been doing a lot of videos lately. Thank you, Miss Candy. I'll try to do a center swipe for you, kind of like the Ordos piece. I did that little one on video, uh, I think that was 13B. But uh, I think I need that point to come up here. I want a little bit of separation in there. Challenge for me is to try to reach over the top of this whole thing and not run to the other side of the canvas. So if I was here without the camera on, I'd be right into the other side. I may still have to as we get further down. That's why I have this in. This canvas is sitting on two Rubbermaid tubs I bought from Walmart. So when I swipe, what leftover residue paint that's going to come off I am going to have to go to the other side. I apologize. I'll do my best to stay out of the camera. Hello. Hello, camera. So this piece I'm going to try to do for the gallery. Uh, some of you don't know, a uh, girlfriend of mine, you know, I rented a space in uh, Chris Sorensen Gallery. Sorry if you can't see me do this part. I'm trying to do it with my left hand to keep my head out of the camera. It's a little bit of a challenge. And we've had our second month we were in there, did our big party last Thursday. It was so much fun. Lots of fabulous food. Heather is a tremendous booth buddy. She's my booth partner. Okay, so that's the junior flower. I think I'm going to come down and do, let's see if this is in the camera. Yeah, it is in the camera. I'm going to come down and do the next row before I fill in all the other stuff. I'm going to come down here and fill in what would be my ginger flower. Now I know these are way too high, so I am absolutely gonna have to wing this. If you can see this, this is kind of how I did the day five video. I just sort of winged it and kept putting these little tips up. Oh, this ginger peach is a little bit juicy. I think I got the ginger flower off of this. This is more of an illusion of color. I shouldn't say that. It's not an illusion. It's a lot of color. But the illusion is, is at a distance, if you relax your eyes, does it look like just an abstract? Or does it kind of look like some kind of lilies? juicier than I like. I was hoping to have more texture. I like a little texture in my paint because when it dries, it dries with a little dimensionality. And then I can go over with the resin. And by the way, these paints are incredible under resin. Mixing in resin, you know, some of the colors look good mixed in the resin. Um, directly, the really light tint colors will look like pink or blue or green mica. 
the uh, colors that you have to wet to immerse, um, they lose some of their shimmer because they're they're becoming less translucent as they get um, dissolved, as they dissolve into the resin. So that's the downside. I'm hoping that you guys just see my hand. Not my head. Actually, the second row, like I said, more of an illusion. You know, when once the swipe's done, I'm going to come back and try to pull in some black, create some more uh, detail. I'm not really good at doing this left-handed, I'll be honest. I don't feel that adept at it. Well, that's interesting for the orange. That's that ginger peach. Now we are going to have to move the camera down because the third row is going to be the ginger flower again. So let me turn this camera slightly. Sorry again, I'm the only cameraman here. Let's see if I can turn it so you guys can see that bottom row. Now these, I like the distance of these. I was pretty happy with these when I drew them out with a watercolor pencil. So I'm just going to follow along with whatever you got drawn. all the way from that one side. It's kind of hard to stretch all the way over there. And I don't want to waste any paint. I'm, I'm hoping we have leftover. So I can do a little piece like this and possibly give it away to a viewer. That would be a novel idea. Show it on the next video. I can do a little piece similar to this. Be nice to have a little giveaway. I know you might want to speed through this if you find this boring. If you don't, you can watch. But you're going to see that I'm kind of creating some points in that paint as I'm moving it around with a palette knife. And that day five video, they reminded me of a, some kind of flower that has pointy leaves like little lilies. I don't mean the cow lilies, I mean the like stargazer or uh, regular pointy lilies. I want to be careful that I take my time and not get in a rush. I always have a tendency to rush when I know I'm doing a video. And I don't want to do that. I want this piece to be a beautiful piece we can sell in the gallery. So I'm going to take my time. I'll give you a little pattern here and there while I'm talking. The only thing is these weird little white spots, unless you intend on filling them in, sometimes you risk them being white spots and then you have to fix them later. So I am going to give these a little definition with some black outlines. But it's a heck of a lot easier in that squeeze bottle than it is trying to put them on with a, a popsicle stick. 
big time saver, especially if you're trying to do a big piece like this. You can still have the paint nice and moist by the time you're ready to swipe. Go to the other side to do the detail. Looks like I got a little oopsie up here, but we'll have other colors come in that will be able to fix that. Probably some of you might have an idea what I'm doing, but if this is the first time you've ever watched me do this, you may be thinking, what on earth is this woman doing? There's nothing to my madness. I just hope it turns out like I plan it. But isn't that how it always is when we're doing these? And then putting yourself out there on video on camera going, oh, please, please, please do well while the camera's on, please, please. That's always the hope. Okay, I think I'm gonna get my green in next. I wanna identify where the green is before I put in the other background colors and the black. I probably won't need this palette knife. Let's see if I cut this thing off. Scroll out here, you guys are gonna to have to see the whole thing. So let me pull this camera out. And this is gonna kind of come out fast, so I gotta be really careful. I'm gonna put a cap underneath the color, underneath the base of the flower, and come down. Which is what my semblance of a stem is. Here, put some green. Now, interesting. I originally planned for. stems to be in a different place, so now this is not going to follow along with what I had drawn, but we're going to wing this. That's what this is all about, is winging it, right? Same thing down here. Kind of do a V, fill it in, come down with the green at the bottom. And I can make up for the shape with the green. If for some reason my shape looks a little misshapen, this is my chance to go, well, this is how it's supposed to be. This is what I intended it to look like, right? <laughs> right. Okay, so these are now looking like big tulips. Or some kind of. This is that artist lock neon green. Like I told you earlier, all the actual colors have silicone in them. Um, only the black that we swipe over with has no silicone. This turns out this will be a really great project you guys can do as gifts. I can see smaller ones done with just one or two single rows. I'm going to give it to a friend for the kitchen. I'm going to take my 
smaller palette knife and just kind of bring that green down best I can. Now the other place I want to do some of the green, not too many, but I like the illusion of, I don't know if I want to leaf. I think I'll do some dots of greenery up top. This is coming out awful fast though. Doing two, then three, then four. So it's some kind of greenery. It kind of gets a little bit fatter and skinnier at the top. Again, let's hope this resists the black really well. But it'll pop against this red and orange, which is kind of the point of where I'm doing this. It is coming out faster than I like. Had I planned in advance, you guys can do a much smaller bottle for this detail work and have more control over the greenery than I am. It's still kind of interesting. Now, bitch, I'm complete, I am completely in the camera. Sorry. Just for this, you get to see my back of my head. This is not normally my style. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Kind of going up on one edge, like the greenery split here. camera. My apologies. I'd like to have a two camera setup where I could switch cameras so you could see me from the front side. But good things will come to those who wait. Okay. So I don't know if I want any more down here. I don't know if I want it too busy. I kind of want it dramatic. Now, the black is also a good accent color on the vein of these leaves, I mean these stems. So I'm going to do one single line down one side and hope and pray that this looks good. I did a smaller one where I did that in it. I got really nice single little 4x12. I don't like that. There's a little name in there. A little single 4x12. And when I did the little black line down the green stem, it turned out really nice. So, add a little bit of detail to them. We're still going to swipe over with the black. Now this looks a little bit lopsided too. Let's move this green over. Another reason why we wear gloves. And let's go to the other side. too far wide than I wanted it to. Hopefully when the black swipes over it won't look too bad. Okay, so two other colors I want to put in the background. Um, I kind of want a look of some blue coming in at an angle, some gold coming in at an angle, and maybe even, I don't know, a blue black at an angle. But I want the color straight this way. So first I'm going to mop up, mock out where I want the blue because I know the blue is really 
going to accent is blue and orange pop. So Getting quiet. Sorry, guys. Getting a little quiet here. So if it looks like it's coming at a glance, then the line's not straight this way. It needs to come this way. So I kind of want that further up. I know I got a little bit of the blue and the orange. It's okay, everybody. It'll be fine. So, I don't know. Part of me is like, do I do a green leaf? Do I not do a green leaf? I don't think so. I know that the gold looks really good underneath the red and the green. So when I did that last piece, I have the gold in there. I'm trying to keep the detail of these flowers, so I have to be very careful, work really slow. I'm not going to rush this because I'm doing a video. It's a lot of gold, everybody. I get it. But I want to leave some room for some black and some blue. jokes I tell you. I'm actually leaving a little area above the black the ginger flower flowers to incorporate some black in there. Almost like a second swipe, but not really. It'll just be a little bit of black that can pull down. And accentuate those. This is where I'm worried about running out of time. I've got a palette knife and it sweeps out so much faster than trying to hand apply all of this with a popsicle stick and draw it on the popsicle. Sorry, I'm gonna get in the camera here. I need to get that detail right up against that green, but I don't want to lose my shape.
thinking I need some more blue in there, but since I have so much of that gold, if I wanted it to come down like it was gold wiped off. I'm wiping my palette knife as I'm changing colors. So now I kind of know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to continue each section. Some of you I could see you fast forwarding during this part and that's completely understandable. You see me mapping out where my colors are. We all fast forward through videos at times. <laughs> one palette knife for the blue, one palette knife for the gold. So now I'm trying to get up right next to those stems with each one of these palette knives and fill this in. The last thing I want is big gaping holes. If you guys have ever experienced that, but kind of a pain in the neck to go back after and fix it. So if you can touch it up as you're going and have the least amount of white canvas showing, you have less work after the swipe. So I'm get this up in here. Get this over to this spot. Here. I'm leaving a little room for black. I know you guys don't know that yet, but each row of what looks like some kind of row of floral, I'm going to try to leave a little outline. Of the black. Again, filling in everything, getting as close to my flow as possible. We don't want too much paint on here. We want just enough paint to swipe. Not so much paint that we're pulling down too many colors into other colors. The whole trick with the swipe, and it takes a little bit of practice, 
you're learning to glide that black or whatever your swipe color is over the top of the other colors underneath without disturbing them. That's a challenge. And first time I did it with one of those, uh, called a paint guide you can buy at Home Depot. Oh, I was way too heavy handed. There's a Facebook live out there with me doing it. So I graduated to acetate. That was my go-to because I knew I couldn't be too heavy handed using acetate. And then I finally went to the, uh, you know what I think I'm going to add? Just a little bit of blue here just for some fun. See what happens even though I'm going to add some black. Just a little accent just for the fun of it. It's my piece. I can, after all, do what I want, right? <sighs> One thing about doing big pieces, <laughs> just stand and do them. Sorry, come in the camera, folks. Just want to get actually I'd like to get the detail of my orange back in there, so I just swiped up my orange a little bit. I was losing it there. I do like these Rubbermaid tubs, the uh paint falls right off in them. They're the biggest ones I can find and in between I've got a big giant cookie sheet with scrap paper or plastic or something that I can toss my tools underneath on right in between while I'm working. So I'm still in the camera. Sorry, I don't mean to be. Oh my god, I'm not running out of gold, am I? Please, I think it's just getting thick. Spread that gold out a little bit. Drag it down. So I can always get into the blue later. It's like there's a goober on the end of this thing already, formerly goober. There we go, let's get some gold out. I thought I made plenty of paint. I'd rather make more than not have enough. Stargazer kind of running in and out of this. 
this gold, one of my favorite colors in the whole wide world, Stargazer. It's a blue violet, even though it comes across blue in the camera, with an interference green mica in it, so it gives you really neat effects. Almost like a peacock effect. Now this this stem was a little bit fat. So I'm gonna run this glue up next to it to kind of fix it. Again, it's an abstract. It's not like a perfect floral, but the OCD personality in me, that's why I seem to become the swipe girl. I like a little control. Oops, see now I went a little bit too far into that green. Let's see if I can save it. If not, I have some green I can go back on top with just before we swipe. Just want to make sure that all these little holes are filled in. Now, let's put in our black detail. Actually, I'm going to very carefully add a tiny bit of blue right here. I don't want to lose the detail of that flower. Okay, this black, it's a full bottle. I've got to be really, really, really careful with this black. Because all I want is just enough to give it a detail. To say, hey, I was here. I don't know if I like that. Let me pull some of that orange back out. And if I want a little bit more ginger peach in there, I will. put it on everyone, but I want to kind of make a suggestion that uh, well, this is the hard part, reaching over the top. I'm probably going to have to go to the other side again, kids that black right in there where that leaf is. This is such a big piece, it's wiping over with black, I'm not sure how much detail you're going to keep or lose. So by putting a little bit of black in here, it's accentuating those florals. Oh god, I'm trying to do it over the top a little bit too much in there. Sorry guys, I'm trying to stay out of the camera. I promised myself I wouldn't hurry. So now I'm going to fill in any white, any gaps that I see in any of the ginger flower. That got a little bit gold and black in there, so I'm going to fill that in. See if I've lost any of my orange and ginger flower. Again, one more time, I can't accentuate how 
much easier it is to fill in the holes now before you swipe. Because then you're running around trying to fill them in afterwards and trying to catch every one of them before they dry. So if you're real careful up front, get as much as you possibly can. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect. But try to get every one you can. We should have a better outcome. Now that I filled in the black, I can come in here and fill in all these little holes. I'm missing some of this stargazer. Now I kind of want a little black under here, I don't know why. A little black in here. Just a little accent. in with this gold. So you can see all the gaps. I'm going to try to touch up. I think there's enough ginger flour to push that over to that hole. And then unfortunately I'm going to have to get the camera again time for you guys. There's some holes there, but I'm kind of running out of the, the gold. I don't think I'm made enough. So let me fill in this stargazer here. Okay. Make sure all the edges have paint on them. Plenty of them because they're going to pour over the edges. Okay, now this is going to be interesting because I did the greenery different. I'm going to try to put in the black around the greenery. We'll see how lucky I get. At least part of it. We're going to still swipe over the top so it should resist it. But this is the point where we're filling in the whole top with black with our swipe color. But I'm going to try to be careful. Now this is the Artist Loft Black. It's mixed with a little uh, Liquitex pouring medium. And uh, looks like I smeared that a bit. And some GAC 500. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Don't give me a goober now. I don't want to squeeze it so hard and have the whole thing out, squeeze out black. A second, I gotta go get a bamboo skewer to put through the head of this thing. Make sure you get it screwed back on. So, I'm gonna take like a little bamboo skewer, poke it in here, see if that doesn't help. No, it's not. Did I nab it? Okay, so I'm going to swap out one of my other caps. I can't take a chance of it bursting. Not sure why my black's not working. I rinsed out my green cap. A little bit of water. the black. 
black. It's working now. It's a little tiny bit of green in it, but it'll, it'll go away quick. Trying to let the black seep in between those green dots. Experiment doing it this way. Never done it quite like this, but hey, first time for everything. Better I try than you guys, right? That's the whole point of doing the video. Let me experiment, show you what I'm doing, and you guys can incorporate that in the way you want to do your work. Don't fill it all of this area with black. Now, I, my acetate isn't wet enough, and I don't want to do this in two or three swipes of the palette knife. I apologize, I'm in the camera now. I'm doing this black here, if you can see me. But I'm going to have a hard time not being in the camera for the detail in this. So, I apologize right now. doing. I'm running the, the black around that green. Someday we'll have a second cameraman who can do this for us. This is really detailed and I don't want to screw it up. Not that we've got we've come this far. I'm not gonna get sloppy at this point, best I can anyway. Okay, any place else where I think we need some black. I kind of like the look of black running down and green running down. I don't know, I think I'm going to re-accentuate my black, my black here, just what stands out when we're swiping. We don't want to lose that detail. You can see the colors already starting to mush together, definitely. Now comes the big ta-da moment. Ta-da! All right, let me get my bottles out of the way. I think I didn't talk about the packages again like I did in the opening, but you know we're never going to be able to get. I shouldn't say never, but it would be highly unusual to get a filling company to do all 216 colors. We'll eventually be able to have a special order page on the website where you know you wait two or three weeks. But anybody that can afford it, now's the time to get them. When we're going to sit down and actually do an assembly line on, I think it's 25 of the 216 colors. We're only going to do 25 sets. And a little bit more of the smaller combinations. Okay, so my acetate I have is too skinny and I wanted to do it in one swipe. So I put painter's tape on it and I'm going to swipe it this way. Now I like to put a little edge of black. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but I will prime my acetate by putting about a one inch line of black on it and do it on this other side. I'm sorry, but I got a full wet canvas, so I'm not going to be able to 
show you how I'm doing this, but just imagine I'm squirting a half inch line of black actually on the acetate so it's primed, which means when I sit it down into the black, it's going to clink. Again, it's too risky to kind of show you if you can see the black, there it is. I'm going to get once one chance to do this. So, I'm laying my acetate down, starting with this first edge, making sure that it's kissing. I think this might actually work. I was holding my breath. I didn't want to speak too soon. Now I have a, a little bit of paint on the edges, which are good to paint the sides with, but it's risky to try to go over the top of this thing. So I'm just going to kind of get the base of it. If you can see me kind of push up the base and whatever's on this acetate, I'm going to let it kiss. My only concern is that black on the top is really covering up those green flowers. And I'm wondering if I look. Now I'm just going to leave this acetate sitting in here because it can drip in here. It's perfectly fine. I am so tempted to swipe this way with something, but let's uh, let's get the torch. Okay, well we're going to let this change right before our eyes and it will. cell patterns, whether it's going to change like the other one did over that 15 minutes, I'm going to hold my breath and pray that all that red starts to pop through and all that green on the top starts to pop through. Um, I really don't want to lose that green. I'm tempted to add a little bit more in there and swipe back. I don't know if that's too much of a risk. Come on, cells. Do your job. I don't know. Should I be swiping there twice? Can I let it just keep changing? Am I going to trust that those patterns are going to pop through? This is the part where we have a tendency to fart around with stuff and <laughs> we really shouldn't. The only thing you want to do is kind of smooth out the paint or if anything missed. Not that you can't go back with a paintbrush and touch it up later. silicone in there for them to resist. Some spots that got missed. And 
it's still changing. It's going to keep changing. It's kind of crazy. My concern is how long it took me to do it and is the paint too set up to completely push through. That was my only concern about doing this big of a piece. That's why I kind of wanted to do a half bit, mask it off, the better half of it. I know I shouldn't be making excuses because we don't know what's going to happen. It could keep changing. So what I do have is a little smaller piece of the acetate that I cut a long time ago into something smaller. And I'm going to take a chance and add some of that green back in. screw up the flowers so I take this little angle swipe that up god that's a lot of black paint okay well that answered that question there's a lot of black paint up there I didn't need to do that running start I'm worried that I have too much black on this thing. <laughs> there are two edges of this thing. There's a rounded edge and a squared edge. So I'm going to use the rounded edge. Okay, it's time to get the palette knife. I know I'm going to screw up this wonderful, cute little pattern, but I'm, I'm right-handed. I shouldn't be trying to do this left-handed. So again, I'm going to go on the other side. Sorry. But my gut is to use this little knife. Let's see if I can't swipe back all the green that I put in there. Get some of that black off. messing in the black area where the green was. I love that color green. Well, I'm liking the cells we're getting. Gorgeous cells. Let's see if I can turn the camera towards this area. Let's see, where's my close-up thingy? It's right here. There's some really beautiful cells happening right here. And I could speed it up. And I'll walk away because it's Always better when you leave it alone for a good 15 minutes, so I'll be back. So here's kind of a close-up afterwards. The top pieces actually do look like big giant flowers. Um, the center, a little bit of it got lost. It's very abstracty. 
the bottom it just looks like this is part of the texture even though I reaffirmed the stems up top. There's some interesting cells happening, especially over that stargazer. Oh, it's so pretty and how it mixes with that ginger flower. Those are really pretty colors. And then the gold and the ginger flower mix kind of makes that salmon-y color. There's that ginger pleach. It's sort of a weird little looking flower there in that second row, but they're very abstract. I'm kind of digging the texture. That's the texture of the stem. If I pull out just a little bit, of course I got a glare on this. You can pretty much see the four big giant flowers at the top. 